I want to talk to you about how to take land. And, you know, we've been able to, by the grace of God, take a lot of land as a ministry. Uh, personally, I've been able to acquire land, physical land, spiritual land, family land, different lands. And when you're going to take territory that the enemy has, and you're going to take it back, you know, you're going to have a fight on your hand because the enemy is afraid of, of when you take land. Because when, when you own it, God owns it. Remember that when I said when you own it, God owns it, meaning God has jurisdiction over it and he can maneuver easy, easily in there because you're obedient to God. And so if we're going to take land, um, understand that, again, send your questions in. I don't see any questions, so I'm just going to talk until you send them and then we'll get right to it. Everything begins with a word from the Lord. So everything that, that, that you're going to take begins with the word from the Lord. Now, um, we find that in Matthew 14, 27 through 29, Jesus tells his 12 disciples, hey, um, uh, take courage because he's walking on the water. He says, it is I. Okay, that's a word. Then he tells them, don't be afraid. That's another word. So then he says, and then Peter says, if it's you, tell me to come to you on the water. And then he says, come on the water. So that word gives Peter the authority right there to conquer anything that will hold him back. That word, come. That's a rhema word. I've talked to you about this, and I'm going to keep talking to you about this, and I'm going to keep talking to you about this because I think a lot of people fail right here. They don't get a real, clear word from God. Then Peter, based on a word, gets out of the boat, and he walks on the water, and he comes toward Jesus. Now, you can't walk on water. It's impossible. And so many times, God is going to lead you to do something that in the natural, maybe you are not able to do. And this is where intimidation will come in, all the lies, all this stuff. We'll deal with all that. But when you get a word from God, then you have that word. Now, you want to get that word confirmed. Because I've seen a lot of people step out on what we call faith, but a lot of times it's not really faith, it's presumption. And we've all done it. I've done it. You've probably done it. If you haven't, you, you probably will. We get excited and all this stuff, and we're in hope, which hope is a, oh, this is powerful. Hope is a blueprint. Hope is the image. Hope is the picture of what God wants to do. But a lot of times we confuse hope with faith. But faith is an action, and faith is a word clearly given by God that this is what I'm going to do. Come, Peter, on the water. Once you have a clear word from God, now you want to get that word confirmed. Now, Pastor, how do I confirm a word? When a word is from God, it it will keep coming back. Like, like, like you'll start seeing it everywhere. So I'm like constantly looking for confirmation. Like, 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 like this word I'm going to share in a few minutes. I heard it in the last three days, 10 times. Because that's God trying to tell me that you need to share this with the podcast live. You got to share this with everybody. And then on Sunday, I'm praying and I'm looking, I, I got a word for Sunday, but I want to, I'm looking for confirmation all week through sermons, through preaching, through prophetic word, through all these different things. I'm looking for confirmation because I want to know that I got a word for the congregation on Sunday. I don't want to just come out with my own word. I want a word from God. And I've learned to live this way. I have to live this way. It's my calling. It's my job. It's what I do. I have to constantly have a word for God's people and I have to make sure that it is from God. So, so how do you know it's from God? I know it in my heart. I'll hear it repeated everywhere. Um, and then if it's a big decision I'm going to make, um, even a sermon, I'll bounce that word off people that I love and trust. Like, hey, this is what I have for this weekend. What do you think? Or if it's a big decision like buying a property or starting a business or standing for a family. Um, you want to make sure in those big decisions, like you're going to make moves. Because I've seen people pick up and move out and do all these things. Never, God never spoke to them. They're on their own. So you got to get that word confirmed. And here's another thing. 
It's a powerful thing. Try to find at least one person, better if it's two or three, that you trust, that are spiritually strong, that have proven to walk by faith and not by sight, that have proven the word of God in their lives. Not perfect, not, no one's that, but they're proven. They have a track record. And preferably some an elder in the church or a leader in the church. Make sure they're part of a church. Make sure that, you know, that they're under authority. Make sure that they're not just somebody that's, you know, a Christian, but not submitted because then they're then that's not that's dangerous. You gotta find somebody who's under authority, somebody who's been proven, preferably an elder or a pastor or a leader, and you wanna present that word of direction that you got from the Lord to them. If it's from God, the people that you trust, if it's from God, most of them will start start agreeing. If they all start disagreeing with you, then you probably really need to take that back to prayer. Make sure that's a real word from God or maybe the timing is off. Even freedom. And I heard from God as clear as you can hear from God. I mean, go to Pharaoh, let my people go. But I still present it and it was from God remember like the Lord spoke to me spoke to me but I still presented it to my pastor I trusted him and I said here and you know what he did he confirmed it he's like he actually laughed at me and he's like well, I've been trying to tell you that for years and and so he's like that's the, and then so we went out and we acted on that word and then the timing of it I, he said when I said this weekend he didn't even fight that part because he knew like it's the Lord go ahead and we just did it and it worked and now all the land we've taken over the last 20 years, you could trace it back to that one word I got in that one encounter. That's why it's so important that you're in church. That's why it's so important that you're worshiping God. That's why it's so important you get to groups, you get in an environment where God can speak because those moments of the voice of God, oh man, when you get a real word from God, you just catapult it to water walking level. Some of you should just say that. I'm moving into water walking levels. I'm a water walker. Come on, somebody. Powerful, right? That's what happened to Peter. One word. He's walking on water. But then we know the story. He, he lost focus. He started focusing on everything else. And we'll deal with that maybe in a few minutes here. Now, I do have one question. Um, oh, this is a good one. So I'm going to say this and then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to address Vanessa Gomez. So when you're getting a word and you want confirmation, once you got a word, then you got to build a case of faith. Why? So when the temptations come, like it came to Peter, remember the wind got crazy, the water got crazy, and Peter started freaking out. He 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 got his eye on off the word. Jesus gave him the word. He got his eye off the word, and he got his eye on the storm. Eye off the word, eye on the storm. Now he moves from faith to fear and the temptation comes and now he's sinking and thank God for the mercy of God. If you do sink, come on, say amen. I mean, I've, I've stepped out before in some ways and it wasn't God's timing or it wasn't even the Lord and it failed miserably. But how many thank God that you could say, Lord, have mercy. And maybe you lost a year or a long time. God can give that back. He can restore that. Thank God for that portion of scripture that Peter failed, but yet he said, Lord, have mercy. And the Lord picked him up. But you want to build that case of faith. So my wife's going to jury duty today and she's got to be there and all this kind of stuff. What's she going to go? She's going to go, hope, well, we'll see how it goes. But they're, they're, they bring the jury to do what? To hear the evidence, to determine guilty or not guilty. So when it comes to your faith and your word from God, you want to build a case. So if I have one word, Go to Pharaoh, let my people go. But 20 years later, I probably have 100 words. You know what I mean? Like I have a whole confession list of scripture that I go off of to, to determine what freedom's going to be, where freedom's headed. And even like when we moved from Santa Fe Springs to the Whittier building in 2018, we began that process, that journey, all that. Now we have accumulation of word. We have a strong case. So... That, that word is working for us. Now, um, can we go, oh, Art Aylman just gave $50 on cash out. Let me, let me say this too. 
a lot of you started partnering, uh, Liliana Vasquez, Marta, and uh, Mar Marciela Soto. A lot of you are partnering, and you're um, say this helps us because it helps us to go further, faster, and do more. So thank you for your partnership. Andrew Curio, Catherine Rojas, Christina McDowell, thank you for your partnership. And you that feel led, pray about it. If you want to be a partner, 25 a month, 100, whatever God puts on your heart, it's all a blessing. Just go to the website. It's all there broken down for you. Okay, so I want to go back to that question by Miss Gomez. And she said, how do you conquer the fear of success? That I think in a, in a nutshell, that's pretty much what you asked. So, uh, yeah, how do you overcome fear of success? So, Vanessa, this was like a big issue for me. Now, I think there's, again, it's, it is a fear. But I'll just tell you what, how I beat it. It happened to me was... Uh, I think I was afraid of two things. I was afraid of failure. And I remember I was going for a job and it was like a, uh, like a, like a prison guard kind of, kind of, kind of job for youth. I've always had a heart for youth and help people. So I thought it'd be a great job kind of fits in my, you know, personality and, so I was going for this job and I was believing for it. Um, and I had to go through a journey of, you know, because my past, my record, I had to go and clean it all up. And I mean, it was a long journey. And then uh, finally it came to a point where, okay, I need to fill out this particular application to, you know, submit it to be able to get hired and all this stuff. And then my aunt Rosalie tells me, um, have you filled that out yet? Have you applied? Cause I did the, all the other steps. And then I was like, no, she's like, and the Holy spirit through her. She, she said, what are you afraid of? You're afraid of success. And it hit me like, oh my God, I didn't even know that was a thing, but it was true because as long as it was, it was a, like a hope, as long as it was like, yeah, one day that could be, uh, I couldn't fail. So it was like, a, there was a hope at least, but what if I tried and they didn't get the job? What if I tried? and I couldn't do the job. Now I gotta deal with failure. So instead of dealing with the failure, I had to deal with more, um, uh, I, don't, I don't want, I just, I'm not gonna even do it. So I had to go to the word of God and realize that whether I get the job or not, I'm not a failure. Whether I get, get you know, a better, that, that's not the point. That's the point where you have to realize I'm God's son I'm God's daughter, and that's enough. And that's identity in Christ. So that's very important, um, uh, Ms. Gomez, that you get a hold of that, and whoever else is listening to this, who you are in Christ. And we have a lot of teachings on that, identity in Christ, uh, that's offered in Lifestyle of Freedom, all that kind of stuff. So, but I, And, and that's not something like, um, oh, I know who I am in Christ, that's it. No, it's like an ongoing thing. And the more you know who you are in Christ, the more fear of success will leave your life and you'll become more obedient because when that fear is gone, obedience will take over. I think another fear of success that I had to deal with, and this is powerful, was the fear of maybe uh, examples I saw that people got blessed and they walked away from God. They strayed from God. They, The blessing took them out. And it, it's real. Deuteronomy 8.18, a lot of people, it's happened. You know, the, the Lord said, I'll prosper you and I'll bless you, but you'll forget about me. So I had to go to the word and find promises that, that determine you'll never fall. I'm able to keep you from falling. There's no temptation that is overtaking you as such as common demand, but God is faithful and will make a way of escape. So these are the words that I had to build into myself to conquer that fear. But whatever the fear is, you gotta, you gotta face it. And, and I think honestly, Ms. Gomez, you fought half the battle. Like half the battle is, this is my fear or not mine, but this is what I'm dealing with. So if, if you could just be honest with yourself, man, that's that takes courage. That takes um, tremendous courage, but you know it and we're gonna go after it and we're gonna, and we're gonna conquer this thing. And then you'll find yourself doing things you never, you never thought you could do. Walking on water. Come on, Miss Gomez, you're a water walker. And that's for all you Miss Gomez's and whatever your last name is or first, hey, you don't need to be afraid of failure and you don't need to be afraid of success and you don't need to be afraid of anything. 
Because if God is for you, look at me preaching, come on, who can be against you? Amen? So God says, take possession of the land and settle it. For I have given you the land to possess. I've already, Numbers 33, 53, I've already given you the land to possess. We have a pastor. My name is not on the pink slip. My name is not on the title deed. My name is not on, you know, the ownership. My name, it, it, it hasn't manifested. The property, the family, it hasn't showed up. God said, faith says, I've already given it to you. Faith says, you're already a father of many nations. Faith says you already are that. And that's where you come behind that word and agree with that word. That if God said I'm healed, I'm healed. If God said I'm prosperous, I'm prosperous. If God said I'd never fail, then I never fail. If God says that he'll never leave me or forsake me, then I say I could run through a troop. I could leap over a wall. I could do all things through Jesus Christ that strengthens me. Amen? And then it's the best when you have people that agree with you. That's why that confirmation piece, that you have two or three or, or an army of people agreeing with you. The more people in agreement, the more powerful that faith becomes. If one can put a thousand, two can put 10,000 to flight. This is, man, this is heavy. So God, there's so many questions coming in. And again, thank you for all your generosity. Thank you for all your giving. You just click the... Uh, the QR code, and you go on the on the website. Some of you don't. I don't want to go off the website, I'm, but just so be a blessing, and I believe God will return it back to you a hundredfold. Man, God is good. Man, he got a lot of questions here. Okay, let me have a little cup of Java. Mm. Now, where were we? Yes, agreement. If you could get people that agree there's nothing like an agreement this is why i think man this is why families are so important like your wife your husband and even your kids even as they get older i think because and then eventually the body of christ of course but between a husband and a wife let's just go there that agreement that prayer of agreement you're already one like you're already one, like the two will be one. So you're already one. So the spirits are already one there. If you could get that strife out and fight for unity and fight for agreement, oh God, that's, that's a powerful, powerful thing. When I come in agreement with Liz or Liz comes in agreement with me, oh, it's so powerful on an emotional level, on a spiritual level, it's so powerful. But when there's disagreement and discord, oh man, that's a tough gig. Now, some of the spouse says, I want to trust my husband. I want to be in agreement with my wife. But, but man, they've done all these silly things in the name of faith. Well, so have you. And I understand that. And we're not going to just be blind. So, but let's get ourselves and our marriage and our families in a position where we're under authority, in authority, and that we little by little Start to learn how to walk this stuff out and then build credibility back into that marriage. Because a lot of marriages will lose a little bit of credibility when you say, oh, the Lord told me this and the Lord told me that and then it didn't happen. And it wasn't the Lord. It failed. Then, then that becomes a, a painful thing in that marriage. And when the husband comes back and says, I want to do this. I want, and the wife's like, well, you know. Or the wife says, I want to do it. And the husband's like, well, that last time. And, and that's a real thing. And it has to be dealt with, dealt with because that, that's what you call hope deferred. The heart's sick in that marriage a little bit. So you really need to target that first before you take another step out and, and target that. Let God heal that a bit. Spend some time with that. Maybe even get to like a marriage group or something and really process that. And then the next time the Lord gives you word, really get that confirmation and then together get the confirmation. And then step out and believe God. And God's going to do what he said he would do. Ah, man, just that alone, honestly, just saved somebody's life, I think. No, just seriously. It's, that's powerful what I just said. Oh, God, I feel the anointing all over the place. Um, again, thank you for all of your, your generosity. So let me scroll up here real quick here. What do we got? Okay, I'm looking at for the... Thank you, Jesus. So... Um, 
beware. Okay, let me ask let me answer this question and then I'm gonna move on. It's powerful. Lord have mercy. Thank you. Let's go back to the other question and then we'll deal with Crystal's question um, about faith in the mind and the motions in the heart. So the, 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 the question was, if I'm not mistaken, can you have faith in your heart and fear in your mind? Yeah, you can. You can. Um, can you have faith in your heart and fear in your mind? Yeah. And if so, how do you conquer the mind? Well, Diego or Digo Cardona. That's exactly what I want to talk to you about. So number two, write this down. Be, beware. And again, a lot of this, we're going to be doing like books and stuff like that on the website. So make sure you keep visiting it. We're working hard on this stuff. I mean, we, we got companies, we hired companies. We're going to be doing more and more books and keep, let my people go book in prayer. It's done. The book's done. Now we're just putting print and covers and everything like that, but it'll be available shortly here. So just keep praying that through. Okay. So come on, somebody let my people go. All right. Beware of the thief called worry, fear, and discouragement. Joshua said in one set, six and seven and nine, be strong and courageous. You will lead these people to inherit the land I promised to give them. Be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the word my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn from it to the right or the left that you may be successful wherever you go. Have I not commanded you? Help us, Lord. That is not a suggestion. Be strong. Be courageous. Do not be afraid. Say that out loud. Not a suggestion. It's a command. Now say it out loud. I am strong, I am courageous, and I'm not afraid. And I'm not discouraged. That's not your portion. That's not your inheritance. That's not God's will. You are strong, you are courageous, you are unafraid, and you are undiscourageable. Even when you are discouraged, you bounce back because you know that the Lord gave you a word. And if you have a word from God, then like Joshua was told by God, I'm with you wherever you go because you got a word. That word is your guarantee. That word is your, that's your proof that the Lord is going to back you up financially, spiritually, physically, emotionally, relationally. Even when it looks like it's not working, it's working. Because you got a word from God. Now, this is not in my notes, but it's been kind of floating around me. Confirmation. It's going to be a confirmation. Is what I mean. This is words. And some of you are going to hear it. And you're going to be like, oh my God, I heard that. Because that. it's a word. It's a word. I will keep you in perfect peace because your mind, your thoughts, are stayed on me. How do you keep the mind stayed on him? Are you going to stare at a statue of Jesus on a cross or Mary or something? Like, is that how you, how are you going to carry that statue everywhere? Well, it's on my, I wear a little cross. That's cool, but but the truth is the way you keep your mind on the Lord is not by something just tangible, but something untangible. And that is the word of God that he gave you. Because that word is him. In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. The word that God gave you is Jesus. Come! That's Jesus. Come! That's him. That's him. Whew, Lord have mercy. The power of God's all over this studio right now. I feel the anointing. Come! That's why I don't have to be afraid. That's why I'm not going to be discouraged. I got a word of provision. I got a word of healing. I got a word of freedom for my family. I got a word of possession for the land. I got a word for abundance in my finance. I got a word for territory in my leadership. If I focus on that word, 
I keep my mind on him. And if I have my mind on him, he keeps me in perfect peace. Paz. Peace. Peace. Mm, mm, mm. I speak peace to your emotion. The storm of your emotion, the storm of fear, I speak peace over you right now. The supernatural peace of God that surpasses human intellect. The Lord says, I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna do something in your day that if somebody were to tell you, you would have you wouldn't be able to believe it. Because when you move into faith, you move into the realm of the spirit and you move into the realm of God. You move into the God class, you move into caring. The promise of God, the promesa de Dios in the womb of your spirit. And through obedience and confession, you walk with God like Enoch, like Abraham. And you manifest as the sons of God, the daughters of God, the children. You manifest the promise of God. You are a worker with God, a co-laborer with God. That's why the scripture says that everywhere they went, the Lord worked with them with signs, wonders, and miracles because the Lord confirmed not their opinion, not what the haters thought. He confirmed the word. I decree and declare the Lord is confirming the word for you in your family, in your finance, in your health, in your position, your career, your calling, your leadership, your influence. The devil is a liar. I feel the power of God today. The word, the word, the word. When the devil rears his ugly head, and he will, we're all tempted to fear. Why did he say don't fear? Because we're tempted. You'll be tempted to be discouraged. But no, we declare it is written, it is written, and it is written. When the Lord spoke those words, those were rhema. He got those words and he declared them and the enemy left for another opportune time because that's what he does. Obey God. Obey that word. Obey the instructions that come with that word because every word has instructions. Some of its move, some of its weight. Every word has instructions. Obey God. Resist the devil. Antihistamine. Resist like cold medicine to a flu. Resist the devil. And the only one thing the devil will do, he will flee from you. The word flee means he will run from you as in terror. When I had to cast that devil out that was trying to choke me in Bible college, and I said in the name of Jesus, that devil was 10 times bigger than me, 10 times stronger than me. But when it came to the spiritual power of God, the authority of the, of the, of the name of Jesus, he ran from me as in terror because he wasn't afraid of me. But the moment I used spiritual authority, <laughs> he fled in terror. I've seen it. He's going to flee from you in terror. And when he does, like Gideon of old, they left all their spoil behind and they fled in terror. Prosperity. Get ready. Miracles, get ready, get, 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 get ready. I preach myself happy today. Again, thank you all you partners for partnering with us. For all you that gave online, Glacia, thank you for giving $100. So many have given, um, uh, this been art you gave, so many gave. Thank you for giving, thank you for being faithful. May the Lord prosper and bless you. It's one of the secrets. When you get a word, you wanna to sow toward that word. It's key. That's why we do Heart for the House and all these offerings because when you give, you want to put down what you're believing for because you want to sow that seed. I've never stood on something big and not sowed big and kept sowing until that thing broke. Be a sower, be a giver. Make sure you pray. If you're a partner, pray. Big things are coming. If somebody were to tell you, he said you wouldn't even be able to believe what I'm about to do. He said it would bring fear into the camp of the enemy. I love you. God bless you. Until Sunday, or you that are all over the world, 
Come on, UK. I'll see you next Thursday. Continue to watch YouTube. Fill your spirit. Fill your heart. And fill your mind. And tell that Pharaoh in your life, in your family, in your land, his time is up. He has to let my people